What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode here at Blended Graphics. If you remember not too far long ago, I created this Tortoise Island photo manipulation and I wanted to revisit this idea once more because I did enjoy creating this and I wanted to try something new, a different approach. So this creation that we're going to do here is we're going to create the same kind of idea but with a hermit crab. And I wanted to create something a little bit more underwater theme and in the ocean and that kind of environment. So this is what we're going to do today and just like last time this will also be a speed art video. However, this time around I'm going to try something new and I'm going to talk over the video to give you my instructions step by step as to how I created this image. And if this is something that you do like and you want to see more videos and styles like this, just let me know down there in that comment section so we can potentially do more like this in the future. All right, friends, let's get right to this and let's get started. All right, so first and foremost, we need to extract our friend here from the background. And as you can see here, as we're going around, there's some parts of him that are not quite as in focus as others, so we will touch that up a little bit later. But right now, just using the pen tool to get him out of this background so we can drop in the rest of our land here. All right, so now we'll go ahead and drop in our sand that we're going to use, just the desert image, and we're going to make sure we get rid of this top part here because we don't need it. Next, we'll drop in this image, and as you can see, there's puddles in there, but we don't quite need that underwater. So, going back to the pen tool, just extracting this and erasing that so we can have the sand shine through from underneath. And now that's all taken care of. I'm going to go to one of my texture brushes just so that we don't have a complete flat line, and it just looks a little bit nicer and a little bit more blended together with this sand and a bit more realistic. So I'm just touching up the edges here with one of my texture brushes. Alright, and as we wrap up here, the next thing that we're going to drop in is another landscape, a little bit more rocks, and we're going to make a few copies of this. So let's drop in our first one here, make a few copies, make sure that the sky is away, and then we're just going to combine these together, invert that from the layer mask, and now we can just start painting this back in. Use your, your own creative, flexible freedom to do this how you see fit. Um, I'm just kind of going and filling in some of these areas that have the sand, just so it just fills up some space a little bit. And let's drop in a couple more in the front here, doing the same thing, just like we did in the background. I do want to still see sand, so I don't want to cover up the entire patches. Just some little rocks here and there, just where I see fit. Alright, so let's bring in our temporary background. This is just going to be a little bit of a placeholder. I ultimately went with a different direction, but this is just to kind of help my vision out as I create this. Next, we are going to go to the underwater scene and start building that up, make it look a little bit more realistic. So we're starting out with a solid color adjustment layer and just dropping the opacity. And then I'm going to each individual layer that we added a second ago. I need to adjust the lighting on that, darken it up since it is underwater, using a combination of both a levels and an exposure adjustment layer. I also have to desaturate it a little bit because it is underwater, and I don't want all of those bright warm tones to come through. And then we're going to touch that up with a color balance adjustment layer, which is one of my favorite tools to work with, adding some cyans and blues to make it feel like it is underwater. Right now, I'm just adding a little bit of shadows underneath the grass, right where the sand meets that edge there, just to give it a little bit of touch of realism and a sense of depth in that background. Alright, so at this point in the scene, I, it is all about playing with a lot of different solid color adjustment layers to try to help build up this underwater scene and make it look really realistic. Playing around with the blend modes, and honestly, it's just about trial and error and seeing what you like, what you don't like, and just experimenting with different colors here at this point. But ultimately, I had the vision of what I wanted to see and capture, so that's what I'm trying to aim for at this moment. And as we move towards the sky now, I did know ahead of time that I wanted to create something with a bit more sense of drama and a bit more stormy and overcast look. So to do this, I've just captured uh, a few different sky images and blended those together to create this look that I wanted. 
All right, so now we're dropping in the main water that I'm using. And if you noticed before, the water and the ground underneath didn't match in terms of distance to this crab. The water was definitely taken further away at a further distance. So replacing that with this water, it makes it a bit more realistic in terms of that proximity. All right, so we're going to load back in this island now. I uh, scaled it up quite a bit. At this point in the game, I'm just kind of experimenting with size and scale and, you know, just a little bit of trial and error. I know a lot of artists will have already sketched this out. Um, I don't normally do that, so this is where I play around with the ideas and just kind of, you know, see what I like, see what I don't like, and just let that guide me. So with everything in place, now it's time to start fine-tuning this a little bit here. And we're starting out with just getting the, the coloring right on our hermit crab, as well as our lighting. I want to make sure that that is starting to look the way it should. Now, just like before, playing around with the exposure adjustment layers, as well as levels to help create these shadows in place. And for the underwater, I also like to experiment with some solid color adjustment layers as well just so that our shadows have a little bit of color to it and not completely desaturated. Alright, so ultimately I decided to get rid of that island and now I'm going with a new direction. And as you can see, I have a few different images that I've used in here. Um, I've got these from Envato Elements at different angles, so I've decided to go with these rocks instead. Just a personal preference, I just kind of like the look overall better with these. So at this point now, you just see me kind of experimenting with size and scale and positioning as to where I want this to be. I did ultimately decide to go with these rocks instead just because I thought the texture looked a little bit more consistent with that of our shell. And as you can see right now, I'm still playing around with other rocks and textures to add onto our hermit crab shell. I wanted to build upon what is already there and had like life and an ecosystem growing on top of the back of its shell. So my original vision for this is actually similar to that of the tortoise composition in the sense that I originally wanted to have this hermit crab as the main island. However, as I started to go along with this composition and started creating this, I decided that I'd rather have the island and this hermit crab separate. And now I basically just have this hermit crab in its home, in its natural surroundings. So as we continue to develop this little ecosystem on the back of the shell here, you notice underwater that the shell goes back quite a bit further. So right now I'm just looking for more rock textures to kind of build the above water portion to kind of show forth that there is more to this than what you kind of see right now. So that's what I'm adding on as well, continuing to develop the scene in the background too. So ultimately I decided to merge these two water textures together just to kind of push back the depth a little bit more. I, I still thought that the where we were with the water was too close in relationship to where the, the ground is from underneath, so I thought this new depth was a bit more accurate. And I also wanted to raise up the sea level as well, so it wasn't a bit too shallow. I did ultimately decide to push this island off to the left, mainly just to open up some space on the right side. But it also gives us a chance to just add a little bit more elements on the right as well to help with the storytelling of this piece. So at this point the top of the water is starting to look pretty good and developed the way I want. We can start building underneath and we're going to start out with adding in this rock texture to give the base of this island so it doesn't look like it's just floating. And then we can further start to develop our scene underwater, give it a little bit more character so it's not so boring, and we can add a little bit of a coral reef system to this. And as you can see with each of these elements here in these different images, they're all a little bit different in terms of lighting and tone. So as I'm adding these in one by one, I'm taking that in consideration, adjusting what I need to, 
going back to some of my earlier color adjustment layers as well and doing some tweaking there to make sure that all of these are blending in together and looks cohesive. As I'm adding in these coral reefs in the background, I'm also noticing the ground. Some of the colors aren't quite matching in terms of hue as well as our lighting level. So that's what I'm doing right now, going back to some of our previous layers to make those adjustments so that it is a bit more consistent with one another. So with the hermit crab shell still looking a little bit bare, I thought we needed to add some more elements to spruce it up a little bit. And what better way? to fit this theme than adding some starfish to this. Going into this, I knew another big element that I wanted to showcase on this piece was going to be a lighthouse. So I found this beautiful picture here of this lighthouse and we're just extracting this from the background. Originally I had wanted this to be on the back of the hermit crab, um, but ultimately since I did decide to make two separate elements, I decided to keep this with the main island. And so as you're seeing now, um, my brain's kind of all over the place and I, I don't tend to just work in one area at a time. As I'm working on one element, I'll notice something that needs some attention to on a different part of the canvas. And so then I turn to that area and start working there. And so I apologize ahead of time for all of this jumping around, but that's just kind of how my workflow is. And um, yeah, so I wish it could have been a little bit more in a chronological order for you in terms of elements. But truth is, I do a lot of jumping around with my work. So now that I'm pretty satisfied with the elements that we have here and in position, I feel that we can move on to adding in those proper highlights and shadows to these different elements. One of the common themes that most successful images have in common is having proper lighting and, and shaping. And as you can see here, what I'm doing is adding a lot of our shadows off to the left and that's mainly because our main light source is off on the right side of this canvas. So we want to make sure that any parts of these elements that are not directly in contact with the light, well, we're giving them the proper shaping and shadows that they need. A lot of the times what my order is with any composition is I like to do the layout first, get all the objects in place, then start with the lighting levels, then start working with the highlights and shadows, and then we can start to add in some of that color grading, which as you can see is what I'm doing right now with this back island. So honestly, if you wanted to be done with this composition at this point, I think you're left with a, still a really nice composition. I wanted to add some final little bits of elements and different details to help tie this composition together, which is why I'm adding this little wave crash in the background. I did have to paint a lot of this by hand, just using some dust brushes, also making sure that our color and the lighting and the hues match our background as well. And truthfully, I think it's all these little details that really bring out that nice quality finish at the very end and is what brings everything together which is why I save a lot of this for the end and I just tried to brainstorm some ideas of how I can add in different elements and what would fit what wouldn't fit and right now you see I'm just trying to clean up this little transition between the top of the water and the bottom of the water so it doesn't look like we just have one very fine edge so like the beginning of our composition where we we're working on the land on beneath we added those shadows where the sand meets the grass. This is the same principle right now where we're adding in the shadows as it gets closer to our hermit crab. I also mentioned at the beginning of our um, video when we were extracting our hermit crab is that some of these edges weren't quite 
as in focus, so which is why I'm adding in different parts of our hermit crab to just touch up some of these edges so it does look a little bit more crisp and sharp and not so blurred. Alright, so our island in the back is looking a little bit bare, so let's just go ahead and add some palm trees in there to again just add that little extra bit of detail to that. So one part of this process that just took forever to do and was very tedious was extracting all of these seagulls from their background. I had a lot of different stock images that I used and I just got these one by one to help fill our scene here. Um, I also did that with some of the fish that we're going to add later. Because I live on the coastal area and I see these guys everywhere, of course I had to add them to this composition, which is what we're doing now. So all we're doing here is one by one. We're going to adjust the lighting, adjust the hues as well, just to make sure that they fit and again are consistent with one another and all look like they came from the same place. we've pretty much finished up with our seagulls here I'm gonna go back to some of our other elements and start adding in a little bit more highlights to help with creating that contrast So just like what we did with the seagulls, we're going to start implementing some of these fish one by one, making those same corrections of the lighting as well as our hue and saturation to make sure that everything is consistent. So I ultimately still wasn't quite happy with the top of our water, so I thought it was missing some of the sea foam here and that little bit of detail. So I'm adding in that right now and I tried a few different methods to help blend this together between using the blend if slider, using the color balance adjustment layer. Uh, ultimately I found that using the selective color adjustment layer was going to pr prove to be the most uh, successful in terms of helping us blend this together and preserving some of those highlights of the sea foam. And just like going back to our wave beforehand, I'm going back to some of our dust brushes here to create that wave crash effect against our little island in the background there. So just painting in this manually one by one just to create again a little bit more detail to this piece. I'm also using this same method to help with a transition for our water and that edge meeting our hermit crab as well. And because we added the sea foam on the left, our right side you know, it needed it as well or else it looked kind of silly without it too. So we're adding this onto the right side as well, using those same uh, methods of adding the selective color and a little bit of the color balance to help blend that in with our water underneath. And really all that's left at this point is just to merge all of this together into a new layer at the top, put it into the camera raw filter where we will do our final edits for this and then that is going to be a wrap. So here we are with our final image. I did add a little bit of tweaking after it as well that you may not have seen from this video, but overall you got to see my process with this. And if you did like this style of video where I do this narrating over the top of the speed art, please let me know in the comment section uh, so we can potentially do more like this in the future. And if you are new to this channel and first time seeing this content here and you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as click that bell to stay notified for any future video postings. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope to see you again for our future videos here at Blending Graphics. 
Please take care and be safe, everyone. I'll see you soon.